Welcome to another edition of Wildlife Sounds from the Forest. And again, we have Dr. Matt Springer here with us. And I think we're going to be talking about a holiday kind of animal. Well, we've got one that um, in some European cultures, this is a traditional meal for uh, the Christmas holiday. Mm -hmm. um, it also is relevant to Kentucky because these guys are going to start showing up here. Um, some have already started showing up, but they're a migratory species that uh, spends most of its time up in the uh, Arctic oh. uh, in the summer. Uh, and then heads a little south for the winter. Okay, well, let's hear what this animal is. So there we go. We've got our first one. Now I've got a series here Okay. because there's multiple examples. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit and you know, the first one will reveal what it actually is, uh, mm -hmm. what the theme is anyway. Pretty straightforward, right? right? So you go to any park in the area in town here and you're going to see these guys. Yeah. Uh, some, sometimes wearing some jewelry on their feet put there by people like me. Uh, but <laughs> tracking yeah, them? Yes, tracking survival. So, the, uh, you know, the theme here is geese, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the Canada goose, uh, mm -hmm. not Canadian. They don't have a citizenship. Uh, <laughs> So okay. The Canada goose or Canada geese, plural, uh, mm -hmm. and probably our most common uh, goose species, uh, at least year round, because we do have residents that hang out uh, sometimes on campus when we don't want them to, mm -hmm. uh, but also our biggest goose species uh, here in Kentucky. Okay. So we're going to go through a bunch of them, but we'll see here what else we've got. Now, what stands out here is a lot more voices, right? There's a lot more voices. A lot more going on. Right. And that's oh. pretty indicative <laughs> of this species of goose uh, or group of subspecies as well. There's multiple species that um, are commonly referred to as light geese, uh, but obviously very white goose, very white. Uh, which based on their name of snow geese, uh, you can see why they have it. And, and for the most part, um, they are a white goose with some black tips on their on their wings, mm -hmm. uh, black feet, and um, you know there's a subset of geese within this population. There, there's called what a blue phase, which is actually a very striking looking uh, grayish bluish version of snow geese, and they'll have uh, pretty much be an entirely dark body. And if you look in there, you may see one that looks that way. Uh, yeah. But other than that, these guys are usually seen in the thousands uh in a field um generally upwards of two three four thousand in a field lots of mouse uh feeding in a field uh and if you're a farmer not necessarily a great sight to see yeah especially it would probably ruin your whole crop <laughs> it, it could cause some problems real quick now we've got one other light goose species that i want to cover probably um Unless you're in Western Kentucky, you're going to be really unlikely to come across these guy in any, guys in any frequency. Uh, okay. But probably my favorite uh, goose species uh, that we have. And that's a, another high-pitched sound, right? Uh, and actually referred to as a yodel. Uh, so the yodel birds is one of the things that they're called uh, in, in hunting communities uh, on occasion. Uh, and that is our white fronted goose uh, or speckle belly. And these guys have the barring on the chest, which increases with age. Uh, and all of these species are, are able to live 15 to 20 years, uh, some older than that. Uh, wow. So if you see a, a white fronted goose here, um, that has a lot of bars on its chest. That means it's a very old goose. So. Oh, okay. And so um, they're the ones that fly in the V formation, right? Because you yes. hear that noise, you're outside and you're looking up and you see, you hear the noise and you see the V. So why the V? So these guys, um, it's, you know, are generally, especially the Canada geese are larger birds, easily in double digits in weight. Uh, and their wings, so it's called wing load. So they're the size of their body and weight to wing ratio and how much it, effort it takes them to fly. Well, the V helps them with aerodynamics as they're going through uh, the air, uh, lower the, the cost of flying. So the, the, the uh, energy costs. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, we talk, you know, um, the movie Mighty Ducks there with the V formation. Ducks don't hold to that as well 
uh, as geese. Almost always you'll see geese in some form of V, unbalanced or balanced. Mm, okay. All right. And so one reason why we're uh, playing this today is because of the movie Scrooge uh, yes. with the with the goose, he buying the goose for the their, that family. So yeah, and, and um, several cultures, uh, Christmas goose is uh, what's made on Christmas Day as a family meal. Uh, a lot of times uh, people will actually go uh, hunting Christmas morning to get that Christmas goose, uh, or it's going to be a very uh, hungry Christmas day. Christmas. So <laughs> Yeah. Yes. All right. So as far as um, do these guys build nests then whenever they get to, I guess, wherever they're going? <laughs> yeah. So they'll, um, so we see them a lot more in the winter because they're actually coming down here to escape the cold of the Arctic. Uh, they will fly up and, and get into uh, the very far northern provinces of Canada uh, to nest. Uh, and they'll nest in colonies uh, for protection um, for in some cases, or at least loosely formed areas that have a bunch of geese in them mm -hmm. uh, and to the snow geese there those that have thousands in the field are have actually caused uh, some problems in terms of eating out their nesting areas uh, in the arctic uh, their populations are so high and and there's what's called a conservation season uh, in uh, february march which is after most waterfowl seasons ends uh, which allows hunters to shoot as many snow geese as they want to try to lower that uh, population to, to decrease the loss of vegetation in the arctic Mm, okay. And how many, well, what are their children called, I guess? And how Goslings. many they have? Goslings. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, anywhere from um, two to six usually um, uh, or more in some cases, but yeah, you know, six is a five, six is a good number. Um, you know, uh, and these guys, especially the Canada geese, uh, there's some subspecies, uh, the giant Canada geese, uh, which are the ones that we'll see that don't leave. They're more likely to be what we call resident geese. Mm -hmm. um, they are very protective and very aggressive and quite large. And as someone that's been on the receiving end of a um, non-agreeable interaction per se, uh, they can hurt. Um, <laughs> so you definitely want to give them their space uh, come nesting season. And, 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 you know, when those big males uh, start honking at you, you, give them their space. Yeah. I was walking out at McConnell Springs one time and they did not want to move off the path. They were honking at me <laughs> So I kind of just went around them. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to make yourself, uh, you know, put your arms up in the air, spread them out, make yourself look as big as possible because they will, uh, if you push them a little bit too much, they can come and attack you and they'll bite and scratch. And, and actually the, the thing that hurts the most is they'll hit you with their wings. Mm. Um, so it's not a great experience. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming yeah. in and talking about them. No problem.